just made it. This is the last video for lecture outline number 10, where we talk about molecular polarity. It's very important to know that molecular polarity very much depends on shape, and that molecular polarity is a huge topic in the next lecture outline, lecture outline 11. So we'll introduce it here, but we will spend a lot more time with it in lecture outline 11. Molecular polarity. Okay, we've looked at polar bonds, polar, bo co polar covalent bonds are bonds in which the two atoms have different electronegativities and there is an uneven distribution of charge creating a partial positive and partial negative. Now let's look at uh, molecules with more than one bond and the best example we can give, and the most important example is water, H2O. If we were to draw H2O, our process would go like this, Lewis structure, would have oxygen with two pairs of electrons and two bonds to the H's. We would then say it's tetrahedral because there are four electron groups. The bond angles, perfect tetrahedral bond angle is 109.5. However, with two electron pairs, we know that the HOH bond angle is less than 109.5 degrees. Uh, and let's see, oh, sp3 hybridization for this oxygen. But now, on to molecular polarity. So let's draw, to do polarity, you have to draw it in its shape. The shape for this is going to have oxygen with two pairs of electrons, sort of in these two positions down here, but there's the H's with a slightly less than 109.5 degree bond angle, I hope. Now, uh, for polarity, we need to draw dipoles. Uh, and I'm going to draw dipoles using plus arrows. Remember, a plus arrow has the plus part next to the less electronegative atom in each bond, and so you will only draw a plus arrow by a bond. The arrow points towards the more electronegative atom, like so. Okay. And what we want to talk about next is is the, the, what happens to these two dipoles? Do they cancel out? Do they add? And is there a net molecular dipole? Which would make it a polar molecule? And the first thing is, yes, water is polar. It is very polar. It is the polar bear of polarness, as far as I can tell. And so, yes, the answer will be it's polar. Now, what we can imagine, I'm going to draw this in a slightly different configuration. I'm going to draw it so it's a little more symmetrical looking. And I'm going to draw dipoles like so. And what we're going to imagine, there's, so a dipole is a vector. A vector has both magnitude, which means size or number, and direction. So this dipole is going uh, down and to the right. This dipole is going down to the left. Because they're the same two atoms, their magnitude or their number or their size, their number is the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this into a down part and a right part. And we're going to break this into a down part and a left part. And what I am going to attempt to convince you is that the left and right parts of these two dipoles exactly cancel out 
and the down parts do not because they're going in the same direction. The left and right parts cancel because they're going in exactly opposite directions. So these two parts cancel, these two parts do not. So when I write the molecular dipole for water, it goes straight down. And it goes straight down, but I'm going to use some more descriptive words because we won't always draw water in this orientation. The molecular dipole for water goes towards the oxygen from between the hydrogens. And there's a couple things that's 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 lovely. I'm glad we know that. Um, but there's really a couple. So that that is that is the most important dipole. And so you might want to memorize that. Um, when you heat up food in a microwave, it is because the molecules actually flip according to this dipole. And so it is a useful thing to know, especially if you like to warm up food in microwaves. And if you're doing such at a cocktail party then uh, you can bring up this fun fact. But in the long run, what you need to know is that there is a molecular dipole. This is a polar molecule. So water is a polar molecule. And that is because even though the left and right hand portions of these two dipoles cancel, the down parts do not, and there is like a leftover or a net dipole. And that'll be very different from our next example. Our next example is CF4, which is a nonpolar molecule made out of polar bonds. And I'm going to draw it straight in the shape. So CF4 uh, carbon is less electronegative, so the dipoles go in four opposite directions. So same two atoms, same magnitude or number, four equally opposite directions. All of the dipoles cancel. So each of these bonds has a dipole, but all four dipoles cancel. Slightly different molecule, CF3H. Three dipoles pointing towards the three Fs. Hydrogen less electronegative points towards carbon. Much easier to see that these dipoles do not cancel, or let's say this, do not completely cancel. There's partial cancellation. So this one is a polar molecule. This one is a nonpolar molecule. because even though there are dipoles in it, all four of those dipoles cancel exactly. Uh, H3. Three dipoles do not cancel, all pointing slightly up. So the left and right portions of these will cancel, but the up portions add polar molecule. 
And there's actually two ways to determine whether a molecule with dipoles is polar or nonpolar. One is to draw all of them and imagine them either canceling or not canceling. Another way is to look at the central atom. If the central atom has everything exactly the same around it, then no matter what dipoles they are, they will cancel. So uh, rule of thumb, if the central atom has all things that are exactly the same around it, Did I say exactly the same? I meant exactly the same. Then dipoles cancel and the molecule is nonpolar. Then dipoles exactly cancel and the molecule is nonpolar. Nitrogen has three hydrogens and a pair of electrons. Those are different. Those dipoles will not exactly cancel polar. Three things the same, one different, polar. Four things exactly the same, all those dipoles exactly cancel nonpolar. Two things the same, two things different, polar. CH4, nonpolar, all things exactly the same. Now we've done a couple of these examples. Um, here's a nonpolar molecule made out of polar bonds. I'm not going to worry too much about that because that's boron. Boron only likes three bonds. No wonder they're all three the same. And that's similar to CF4. Ammonia we already did. Let's spend our time on C2H6. When you have more than one carbon, connect the carbons to each other. Then there's only hydrogens that can go around it. In this particular case, we've got, um, uh, also, let's draw the shape. I have carbon with one, two, three, four things. That's tetrahedral. Same with the other carbon. I would not ask you to draw two tetrahedrals connected to each other, but we can do it. I hope we can. hope I can anyway. Okay. Now, each of these has a dipole because they are two elements that have different electronegativities. And it turns out that if you look right in the center here, these three arrows are exactly opposite these three arrows. These dipoles do cancel exactly. And that's hard to see. But we'll come up with our second rule of thumb. Anything made out of just carbon and hydrogen is nonpolar. Two rules of thumb and um, that's where we'll stop with today's lecture.